It is quite a scene right now here in Lexington Kentucky with a couple of unbeaten teams getting ready to go. It's the Texas Longhorns who are here. Big Blue Nation is fired up. Rupp Arena is sold out. It's a battle of the Giants coming up next. Welcome to Rupp Arena here in Lexington for the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Sonic. And welcome to continuing coverage of Jimmy V. Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. So far, it's the Big 12 for the SEC 1. Three games tonight, including this one, and then two more tomorrow to wrap it up. Hi everybody and welcome to Rupp Arena. Look and listen to this place. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, happy and lucky to be here. Two 7-0 teams, number six against number one. What are the keys here tonight? Well, for Texas, the game plan is really simple. You're playing the number one team in the country, the best defensive team, the best shot blocking team. So you want to try to get out and transition and play ahead of their defense. And then on Kentucky's offensive end, Make them take challenge jump shots and limit them to one shot. They're the best offensive rebounding team in the country. It's easy, Dan. <laughs> the, the executing yes. that game plan is a lot different. Just do as he says, <laughs> and everything will work out fine. Listen to the noise here in this place tonight as the Wildcats, the Blue Platoon, are now getting introduced as the starters for tonight's game. Let's check out the starting lineups here in this game tonight. And we begin with the visitors from Austin. They're without Isaiah Taylor. They're outstanding sophomore guard. Out with a broken wrist, so Javon Felique's into the starting lineup. Jonathan Holmes, a senior, is off to a magnificent start so far this year. For Kentucky, you'll see all ten of them, so we may as well show you all ten of them. It's the blue platoon that will start, but of course the white will get their minutes as well. Nobody averaging more than 22 minutes per game thus far this year for the Wildcats. With more on tonight. Tonight's big matchup. Let's send it over to third member of our team, Shannon Spain. Well, Dan, a primary focus for Kentucky in practice this week was all about speed. Two reasons. Number one, like Jay just mentioned, they know this Texas team is going to try to set the pace, particularly in transition, and Kentucky must match that. Number two, overall shots. Currently, Kentucky is taking approximately 60 shots per game. Coach Calipari's goal is 80. He wants them to move faster, and the key to all the speed drills this weekend was EJ Floreal, the sophomore. His parents Parents are track and field Olympians. He was a state high school sprinting champion. He is the fastest player on this Kentucky team. He had the guys flying up and down the court. All right, Shannon, thank you. What John Calipari today told us is they want somebody to really challenge them. They want somebody to make shots. They want somebody to play great against them to see how his team responds. And for Rick Barnes, his line was simple. He had a media conference with a, uh, a bunch of media from Kentucky yesterday and those around the country as well. And he said, hey, we're showing up to play. I mean, they, they it's not like Texas is coming in here thinking they don't have a chance to win this game. Well, they do have a chance. And Rick Barnes knows that they're going to play hard. And they're going to play physical. But Rick Barnes was also having some fun, too. He was the president of the John Calipari fan club all <laughs> week with the media. Kentucky and Texas. Getting ready to go here at Rupp. It'll be Carl Anthony Townsend, Cameron Ridley. Our officials are Doug Sermons, Don Daly, Lee Cassell. And we are underway as two players tumble to the court right off the tip, and Kentucky gets the first possession of the night. Yeah, it just showed how physical this game is going to be. Demarcus Holland and Aaron Harrison just go right down to the ground. Harrison the lob. And that's what Texas is trying to prevent more than anything else is Kentucky being able to throw the ball up to the rim. Well, they want to play five on five in the half court and force challenge jump shots. Ridley know both teams will ferociously attack the offensive glass. Aaron Harrison knocks down the mid range jumper. And that's where he has improved a great deal from last year. Nice shot fake. Got past a really good defender in Demarcus Holland and went straight up and down. That was really well done. And Cameron Ridley getting a little bit too physical with Carl Anthony Towns. And Ridley is called for an early foul. Well, Rick Barnes wants his team to be physical, but you still have to be smart. Where he'd really like him to be physical is when a shot goes up, you get a physical blockout because, Dan, this Kentucky team 
is really phenomenal on the offensive glass. They get almost half of the missed shots for second shots. And now Poitras down to the post. Holmes defending him. Andrew Harrison using the screen, missing the three. And down with the rebound is Demarcus Holland, outstanding defender for Texas. And a guy who plays as hard all the time as any player that Rick Barnes says he's ever coached. Hard worker, as we mentioned, an excellent individual defender, especially on the ball. And the referees are really watching the post. That's the second foul called in the post in as many possessions down on the Texas end. And this one was on Towns of Kentucky. These are two huge teams. The front court of Kentucky is bigger than every NBA front court with the exception of Portland. And Texas isn't much smaller. Willie Cauley Stein, the junior big guy for Kentucky, is guarding Jonathan Holmes, the three man for Texas. Poitras with a rejection. Stein is an excellent defender. Guarded with Dante Hinton, a three man and a good wing. Good pass. Great feed inside, and Holmes is fouled on the feed from Ridley. Macaulay Stein just turned his head. And a really nice cut by Jonathan Holmes, who has really retooled his body. He's a different player this year than he was his first three. He's lost about 20 pounds, gotten stronger as well. And Remember, he hit the game-winning shot against UConn just last week, a corner three with time running out. And a guy who can play the three and the four. When Texas wants to go big, he plays the three. On occasion, Jay, you may even see him, because of his extended range shot, he may even play the two a little bit for Texas. And really, on offense, doesn't matter what position we call him. It really matters as to who you guard. Coast to coast, Andrew Harrison, no, Holmes the rebound. That's what Shannon Spake was talking about, trying to push the ball up the court. Wasn't the best look that Andrew Harrison could have gotten, and no offensive rebounding on that one. And now Poitras on Felix. As Kentucky scramble to get back and just find anybody. And good defense yeah. by Aaron Harrison. Staying right with Holland. Still plenty of time to shoot. Lambert, a very good passer, is a forward. Holmes will step back. Holmes will spin inside. Tapped back out and a fresh 35 now for the Longhorns. That's really the area of the court where I think Texas can get some shots, that mid-range area. If you're going to try to get it all the way to the basket against these shot blockers, it's going to be tough if you can drive it and then pass it out. Is that Ridley again? Cameron Ridley just picked up his second foul within the first three minutes of the game and that's going to send him to the bench yeah you have to adjust it's the same official that's called all three fouls down in the post so clearly he's watching that and look there's contact that goes on in the post but cameron ridley just throwing a little bit too much into it and so miles turner the outstanding freshman from bedford texas 6 11 240 the second highest rated incoming recruit in the country according to the espn 100 what does he bring well, he's an excellent shot blocker and a really good rebound. He plays about 20 minutes a game, very productive in that time, and a very skilled player, but still learning how to play. Andrew Harrison will step in and commit the foul. Texas went zone in that first possession with Turner in the game. Well, and they're going to play a lot of zone tonight. And I think when you play against Kentucky, the, the hard part in playing zone is blockout responsibilities. But you want Kentucky to shoot jump shots. And if you can keep them out of the lane by showing zone, I think you're going to see a fair amount of it from McFarland tonight. So an early blow for the Longhorns with Ridley on the bench with two. Holmes open in the corner. The assist to Lammer. That's what we were talking about before, Dan. The drive into the lane and then kicking it out for an open shot. And Kentucky's got to do a much better job of staying with Jonathan Holmes. He's hitting 50% from that three-point line. That's his 15-3 on the season. Holly Stein is fouled on his way to the rim. Any time that you can put pressure on the rim, you don't have to do it to score, but it draws defenders. Carl Anthony Towns comes in, and he's deep into the lane. Then he's got to close out all the way to the corner. And Jonathan Holmes spaces to that three-point line and is wide open and ready to shoot when he catches it. That was a great play and well executed by Texas. The foul was on Turner, his first. And at the line out for Kentucky, Willie Cauley-Stein. With that ankle injury at the end of the last year, missed the end of the NCAA tournament as Kentucky made it all the way to the national championship game. And Turner, who picks up the one foul, immediately goes to the bench. And Prince Ebay is into the game. More size, a 6'10 junior, known for his ability at the defensive end of the floor. 
Well, smart move by Rick Barnes. You don't want your freshman picking up another foul while you're kind of feeling out this game and the referees are trying to establish control of it and calling some fouls that, frankly, they may not call later on. And at the ball screen for Felix, got the switch. And Kentucky, because they've got similarly sized players and super athletes on the perimeter, they can switch everything. They can even switch with Willie Colley Stein on their guard. And look at the length of Poitras up at the top bothering Felix. So Felix will launch one. And another offensive rebound for Texas. Nearly thrown away by Lambert. Aaron Harrison leaked out instead of sticking around to go after that rebound. If Kentucky leaks out, they take away an advantage. That's off the leg of Holmes, and that's going to be a turnover. First time out of the night, 4-14 in here at Rupp. Texas and Kentucky tied in the early going. Tonight's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. And the Sonic showdown between Texas and Kentucky. Texas has never defeated the number one team in the nation. They're 0-7 all-time against number one. And we may not expect a lot of scoring. Look at the opponent's field goal percentage for both of these teams coming into the game tonight. One thing we will expect is a lot of changes for the Wildcats. Five guys going out, five new guys coming in. Let's go to Shannon. Well, Dan, all you have to do is check out the student section. They are wearing their white shirts. They had blue shirts on to start the game. That means the white platoon is on their way out. You know, this platoon style, it doesn't only help in game. These guys in practice, I watched them yesterday, extremely competitive as they do a lot of scrimmages. But it, it was the players that really had to buy in for this whole thing to work. And Andrew Harrison told me, didn't think it would last this long, but he said, we're winning, aren't we? They sure are. 7-0 is Dakari Johnson who comes off the bench, Jay. One of the most improved players we've seen this year and gives the Wildcats the lead. Much more mobile. His footwork is really good in the post, and he gets deep post position where he doesn't have to make some fancy post move. And he is leading this team in free throw attempts largely because he gets the ball in an area where he gets fouled. And with this platoon, this is the pressing platoon. So they'll put on full court pressure, go 94 feet. Where the point guard Tyler Euless can really get up underneath the point guard and make it difficult. It's a totally different look you have in this next platoon. Same group on the floor out of the timeout for the Longhorns. And that's a good job by Marcus Lee to extend that catch by Connor Lambert. And they can catch it further out. Uh, forgive me, Kendall Yancey is into the game now for Texas number zero. Great work on the offensive glass. That's been a strength in the early going tonight here for the Longhorns. Some of the rebounds have been longer rebounds. That one near the bucket. Prince Ebay going after it with both hands. Another big man with long arms. Now, Texas is an excellent offensive rebounding team as well. Just not as prolific as Kentucky. The foul was on Trey Lyles, the freshman. And Miles Turner's getting ready to check back into the game for Texas. Well, it's funny, Dan, when you've got so many good big guys, sometimes the guards and wings I say, well, you know, it's good guys to grab the rebound. I can go early. And that's really what's been happening with Kentucky. They've been leaking out early and not sending all five guys to the defensive glass. And already for Texas, they've got four offensive rebounds in less than five minutes of action. As Lambert goes to the bench, and Turner checks back in. And eBay, you can see a lot of a lot of hang time on those free throws, but he gets the bounce on the second. He's now four for 11 from the line this year. 2-3 zone, they were in a tandem early to slow the advance. And a turnover. Just a poor pass, the cutter wasn't expecting it. And Kentucky nowhere near as proficient offensively in their zone offense as they are in their man offense. Which is true of most teams. Yeah. That's why you're surprised that more teams don't play zone. That's why Syracuse hasn't come out of it in so many years. Holland, nice pass, and a slam by eBay. You drive, you're going to draw defense and draw some help. And you've got to be ready to kick it. If you're going to try to finish on your drive, it's going to be awfully difficult to finish amongst the trees. But if you kick it out or drop it off, you got a chance. Pass knocked away again. But Remember, this... Kentucky isn't the only team with great size and length out here tonight. Texas is big as well. Johnson kicks it back out. Kentucky fumbling the ball around, and they lose it. Here's Holmes. 
And he will lay it in to put the Longhorns up by three. Those are the kind of buckets that Texas needs through the course of this game. Can you play ahead of the Kentucky defense? A couple of highly ranked unbeaten teams. Johnson off balance draws the foul and will shoot a couple. That was a great screen on the interior by Marcus Lee. Set a little screen on the middle of the zone and allowed Dakari Johnson to jump out in front and get post position. Johnson at the line for Johnson to the free throw line for Kentucky. The foul was on eBay. So among the Texas bigs, Ridley picked up two early ones. Turner's got one. eBay's got one. And now Rick Barnes has gone to his ninth man. Jay Jordan Barnett, a 6'6 freshman from St. Louis, a guy he told us last night and this morning they got to get him in there. They got to figure out a way to work him into the rotation. What does he need to do to stay on the floor? Well, he needs to be tough and physical without fouling because he's smaller. He's only 6'6. That's him in the corner. Misses the long three, long shot, long rebound. And right now, Texas just a little more alert and quicker to the ball, but that's where this platoon system works as well. You pick up a lot of fouls on the opposing big guys. And you've got big guys galore, if you're Kentucky, that you can put into the game. You can wear teams out with your depth, and you can foul them out with your depth. And eBay just picked up a foul on Dakari Johnson. Now, John Calipari has never said it's going to be this way every minute of every game all season. If he needs to come out of it, he'll come out of it. They haven't been tested all that much. They have been demolishing most of their opponents. The closest game they've had this year was a 19-point win over Buffalo. They beat... BU, Boston University by 24. Remember they blew out Kansas by 32. Yancey struggling to maintain possession. eBay let the ball bounce away from him, giving Kentucky an opportunity. And it's going to be an offensive foul on Trey Lyles. Number two on Lyles. You know, it's funny, Dan, when talking about these platoon, this platoon system, you know, it's almost like people want for Kentucky to blow everybody out in the first three minutes. It's like if you went to a prize fight and you don't get a knockout in the first two rounds. You know, there's a cumulative effect to this, just like there are body punches in a fight. And so far this season, everybody that they've played, they have ultimately knocked out. But you can't expect them to knock them out right away. And I think as the season goes along, Kentucky's going to get more proficient and better on the offensive end. And that's when you're going to see a much better team because defensively they're going to be they're going to be really good all year. Kentucky's number one in the nation in fewest points allowed and opponent's field goal percentage. And Felix was just called for the offensive foul. You got to earn your real estate bringing the ball up the court against this group, especially as you said, this platoon with the ball pressure that Ulysses can put on. No question. And you're, going to, you're certainly going to have to watch your arms right now because every offensive touch is being called a foul. So you have to you have to play good, you have to play well offensively without fouling. Texas with a one-point lead, seven minutes in. The interior screening in Kentucky against this zone is really good. Devin Booker a miss. Texas ball. Booker's a guy started off very cold and has heated up a lot in the last few games, and now here comes the blue platoon. And they changed the t-shirts. <laughs> and now you get a fresh group of McDonald's All-Americans coming in. They've had a rest. They've been able to watch the game a little bit. And you've got the same unit on for, for Texas. Ooh. And Felix could not handle the pass from Turner. And they turn it over. And the turnover is high for both teams here in the early going. You don't see many teams, especially in college, you don't see men in the NBA that go 6'5", 6'5", 6'8", as your guards. Corner three, no, for Aaron Harrison, and down with a good rebound in traffic is eBay. And that is a lot of traffic there, too. Wow. How about Willie Cauley-Stein playing free safety, picking it off? And then a foul on the Longhorns. That's eBay, and that's his second. So Ridley's got two, and eBay's got two. And Texas is deep 
in the front court. They've got five legitimate bigs, but two of them already have two fouls. Well, that's the problem. That takes away some of your aggressiveness, and it changes your substitution pattern. And you know that Kentucky's going to continue to go at those big guys and go inside. You know, Connor Lambert's got height. He doesn't have quite the bulk as some of the other big guys for Texas. And now Turner moves from the four spot really to the five spot, and he's got a foul as well in this game. And where that can hurt the Longhorns is on the glass. Now this platoon, the blue platoon, more of a pressing unit for this team is putting some full court pressure on as well. They want to keep this pressure on for 40 minutes against Texas to wear out the Longhorns. Yancey, the kick to the corner, the extra pass. And Barnett throws it away. Seven turnover committed by Texas. And a rejection at the rim by Turner. Elites. And made a good decision to not go any deeper than he was going already. Texas cannot find a good shot. Yancey on the offensive glass. If it weren't for second shot opportunities, it would be really difficult for Texas. I mean, look, stopping Kentucky is one thing. It is really hard to score on this team. Their defense is phenomenal. Poitras left it short. I don't think Kentucky's a great offensive team. I think their offense has a long way to go. Their defense is already there. Best in the country? No question. I mean, who else can put this kind of pressure and, and throw this kind of length at you? And when you attack the basket, I mean, you're hearing footsteps every time you drive. And they're big feet. And Carl Anthony Towns reaching in from behind just picked up his second foul. Texas hanging tough because of their offensive rebounding. A nice drive and dish. Prince EB with eBay with the finish. And then in transition, you got to play ahead of this Kentucky defense because it is awfully difficult. Kentucky, a one-point lead early for the Longhorns, who Jay are without a, an extremely important player for them and Isaiah Taylor. Well, their sophomore point guard got injured up in New York when he was fouled and hit the deck. A guy who averages over 15 a game, and he's incredibly quick and fast with the ball. A guy who's got a great floater, he can finish in the lane especially with his left hand when you put him out there and you've got a, a much more potent Texas offense and he's a guy who could break a defense down when he kicks it he can draw a lot of defenders to kick it hoping to have him back for conference play which by the way the Big 12 figures to be a very interesting league this year Iowa State's a force right now you know that I mean Kansas is going to get better you know that and they're the 10 time defending champs so that's that's worth something we saw Oklahoma down in the Bahamas and they're a very strong team going to be an interesting league. Well, Texas playing man-to-man -man going under every screen. Nice feed inside. Pauly Stein, no, and a whistle and a foul. Another foul call going against the Longhorns as we send it over to Shannon. Well, Dan, I did speak to Taylor today, and he told me January 3rd, you mentioned conference play. He has that circled as a potential uh, comeback game. That's when he hopes to get back against Texas Tech. But he is using this time when he's not playing uh, for the good, I mean, to get better. Communication. He actually sits next to Coach Barnes and works with the coaching staff. He's kind of a pseudo coach. He says it's helping him with communication with the coach. It's helping him see things that he never saw before. And he told me communication, everything is just helping across the board. All right, Shannon. Thank you. Meanwhile, on the court more foul trouble for Texas that was the second on Miles Turner he goes to the bench Ridley's on the bench with two and eBay's come back into the game with two and the game's not even ten minutes old and it takes away your aggressiveness as a defender and Kentucky on the offensive end the Wildcats have really struggled really struggled now they've not rebounded well on the, on the defensive end and given Texas some second chances and the Longhorns have been very good on the offensive glass but Kentucky's got to slow down on offense they're not going to find openings by going too fast and now some contact down low between the two 44s and it's Dakari Johnson of the Wildcats who has called for the foul that'll be his second so far the guards are managing quite well in terms of staying out of foul trouble but the bigs on both sides it's been really physical down low yeah they've called a lot of the contact and you know, it's impossible to have big bodies like that crashing into each other and not have contact. I mean, you're going to have that many that many bodies in a small space. It's going to be physical, but you, you have to get you have to cut the referees some slack in this thing. Yeah. Th these officials do not officiate this kind of size no. very often. 
And I think they're, they may be taken aback a little bit by it as well. Meanwhile, a note for the Texas folks who are going to be down in the tournament in the Bahamas next year. Oh. When eBay throws a free throw that high in the ballroom down in Atlantis next year, he's going to scrape the ceiling. He might have to, <laughs> he might have to lower the arc on those free throws between now and the Bahamas next season. He got one of two. It's Texas by two as we near the midway point of the first half here in Lexington. 2 3 zone. And Poltris will lay it in to tie it up. A nice pass by Dakari Johnson. And a good cut to the basket by Alex Poitras. Kentucky's basically switching everything. Pauly Stein is good as there is as a seven-footer. You talked about it earlier. To go out on the perimeter, move his feet and cover somebody. He can guard, he can guard anybody on the floor. Yeah. Holmes got him in the air and knocks it down. How about the year that Jonathan Holmes is having? Well, without him, where would Texas be? Their leading three-point shooter, an outstanding rebounder. And I'm not sure you're going to find a harder worker. And he's exhausted at the end of the game because he works so hard. Rick Barnes speaking in glowing terms about both Holmes and Holland, how hard each of them works at all times. And boy, that's got to rub off very well on your younger players. Well, in this zone, you get the ball into the middle to Willie Cauley Stein. And Texas is not doing anything about it. They're letting him, they're not letting him shoot, but they're not trying to take it away from him. And a three second violation on the Longhorns. The Jimmy V Classic comes your way Tuesday night on ESPN from Madison Square Garden in New York City. A couple of great matchups Villanova and Illinois in the first game, and then Indiana and Louisville in the second game. The Jimmy V Classic Tuesday night on the home court of college hoops. How about Jay Wright's team so far this year? Very good. Their, their guards are terrific. Ryan Archipiacono is a really good guard. Good pass. Shot was altered. Still loose. Foul on Willie Cauley Stein. Willie Cauley Stein needed to go directly to the rim. He, he's he's kind of jackknifing in there and double clutching. He's got to go right to the rim. He's not going to get a foul if he double clutches. Like, if you try to avoid that block shot, no referee is going to call a foul. Boy, that, you had better be a man going in yeah. there trying to grab a rebound. Might be, might be advisable to wear a mouthpiece and a helmet. <laughs> well, there are 30 NBA scouts here tonight, and they are seeing a lot of players on both sides with the size and the ability to play at the next level. Well, that's why they're here. Andrew Harrison. And eBay skies for the rebound, and now it's Lammert underneath, called for the foul. Those referees are going to be out of breath soon, <laughs> blowing their whistle on yeah. every possession. You know, Lammert is 6'9", 240, and he looks like a, a wing exactly. out there right now compared to some of the other bodies on the floor. And for Kentucky, it's not just their big guys. Their guards have tremendous size. You know, Alex Poitras is 6'8", and he is strong, and he looks tiny out there. And John Calipari just did something he hasn't done very often so far this year, and he mixed up the platoons as he brought in Marcus Lee and Dakari Johnson. So they're both playing with the blue group right now. And again, as we mentioned earlier, he is not married to it, although as I say that, here come the other three members of the white platoon to come into the game. Holmes left it short. Aaron Harrison with a Euro step can't finish and Lambert down with a rebound. Kentucky's getting some pretty good looks six feet and in but haven't been able to knock them down. Well they're trying to push the ball up the court and I think the, the speed game that they're trying to play is a good idea but if it's not there and they have to run half court offense I think they've been going too fast in their half court offense. Lambert a good pick and pop guy, also a good passer. Actually leads the team in assists this year. Shot clock winding down to seven. Yancey's got to make a play here. Lambert will put it up from three and drain it. Connor Lambert now six for 16, shooting threes on the season. They threw Marcus Lee away from the basket, and the lefty is one of the best passers among big guys in the Big 12. Also showing that he can shoot it. Now he's going to draw Marcus Lee even further away open up that lane a little bit you like the effectiveness of the zone it's been very effective because it's making Kentucky stand around 
they're not able to drive gaps, and they really need to do that. Hoyfus with a jump hook. And the offensive rebound for Johnson. Andrew Harrison back off to Dakari Johnson, and he's fouled. Timeout on the floor. John Calipari said he wanted somebody to give his team a battle to see how they would respond. He is getting it tonight from Connor Lambert and the Longhorns. Texas with a five-point lead. Guys, let's see what happens. Yale right now is leading UConn back. Dan Schulman and company alongside Jay Billis. Guys. All right, fellas, thank you. A five-point lead for Texas over Kentucky. John Calipari continues to shuttle guys in and out. One thing that Jay wanted to look at as well. What if these guys play 40 minutes? Then let's look at their numbers. Yeah, we talk about points per minute because over the course of a game playing in this style, you can be more productive per minute. So you extrapolate that out over 40 minutes. Look at Devin Booker. He's averaging 23 points per 40 minutes. Dakari Johnson, 21 and almost 15 rebounds. Carl Anthony Towns, 17 points, 16 rebounds. Willie Cauley Stein, 16 points, 11 rebounds. You know, the, the platoon system allows these guys to go all out while they're in there, get a break, and they're more productive per minute than they would be otherwise. And, and the other thing, Dan, this John Calipari doesn't talk about this. One thing that this system does, too, is it hides some deficiencies. Like, these are not 10 perfect players. They've got deficiencies. And this helps hide it, the, uh, some deficiencies that would show up if they played 30, 35 minutes a game. Johnson misses them both. And then a foul going against Kentucky. Is that Cauley Stein? No, it's on Lyles. That will be his third. He becomes the first player on either side to pick up three fouls in the game. And what that does is allows, even though Prince Ebay, not a very good free throw shooter, Texas gets to score with no defense. Well, Kentucky has really struggled on the offensive end. They are three of 16 from the field. Let's check it again with Shannon. Well, Coach Kelly Perry walked over to his guys during that last time out, just kind of shaking his head, Dan. He said, it's all about fight. It's all about energy. He said, the easy way out is to not fight. What are you guys going to do? Jay, let me ask you this. As eBay misses a couple, Lambert with yet another offensive rebound. That's seven offensive rebounds for Texas in the game. Right now, John Calipari has mixed up the platoons. It's no longer blue or white. As Lambert gets a clean look but misses the three. There's another offensive rebound. The ball is bouncing all over the place. I mean, it, you know, it's, look, it was hard to get that defensive rebound off of Prince Ebay's miss from the free throw line. I mean, the ball hit the ground. It's a difficult, you know, this is a difficult game to play in, and that's one, that's one of the reasons they're not, Kentucky is not playing well, especially in the offensive end. They're not doing anything on the defensive glass. So changing up the platoons, he's got to make some kind of something happen. How good is Tyler Ulysses' defense? And Holland has to force one up at the end of the shot clock. And here come the Wildcats. Ulysses is a terrific point guard. Always in control. He's an outstanding shooter. Shoots well over 50% from three. He's all of 5'9", 155. And the ball moves when he's in there. Good pass. Towns. They can't buy one right now. They're not getting great shots. I mean, that was a good shot. They haven't got they haven't really been able to drive into gaps. And I think that's the next thing for them. They've got to drive that ball into a gap and attack this zone. Here's a passive. Great look. And Holmes will normally knock that one down. And instead, we've got a foul going against the Longhorns. Meanwhile, Kentucky at the offensive end, they've got three field goals in this game. Three in 14 and a half minutes. It's really in a, in a way amazing. They're only down five. Yeah. But their defense is so difficult to score. If they if they had taken care of the defensive glass, they would have had to play so much defense. Willie Cauley Stein at the line. Lots of fouls, double bonus both ways. TCU looks to clinch a share of the Big 12 championship and keep pace for the playoff race in a critical battle against Iowa State tomorrow, noon Eastern, on ABC. Any difficulty from your perspective when you look at the lineup Kentucky has out there now, a mix of the two groups? These guys have rarely played together because it's always been blue against white, even in practice. Yeah, but they've switched it up here and there. So it's not, it's not that, this, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, these guys can play with each other. It's not that hard. 
got to give Texas a lot of credit with the way they've handled this game, especially on the defensive end. They, they've forced Kentucky to take challenge shots. They've not let them get to the rim. They have essentially not let them dunk. You know, so they've not gotten the, the drives that they normally get where they can pitch it up to the rim. Holland fouled by Booker on his drive to the basket. So DeMarcus Holland heads to the free throw line for two. Texas, just like Kentucky, is 7-0. They went up to New York in the 2K Classic at Madison Square Garden. Beat Iowa by 14. Beat Cal by 16. They also beat Connecticut by one. That was without Isaiah Taylor. They've been playing without one of their best players for the last four games. They're coming off a 10-point win over UT Arlington a few days ago. Booker, a deep one. And a nice job by Lambert on the glass. And it's been one and out. The offensive rebounding of Kentucky has been negated by Texas. Texas is getting really good blockouts. Leaks in the game. I haven't seen him in a while for Texas. Nice defensive job by Devin Booker. Not letting Yancey get the ball off that handoff. Holmes over Collie Stein. And it is Kentucky ball. And look what they had to do to get a defensive rebound. Whoa, and a challenge at the rim. And Holmes is going to get called for a flagrant foul. And Rick Barnes is incensed. He's saying he made a play on the ball. And the officials will go to the monitor right now to have a look. A terrific pass by Eulis to Carl Anthony Towns. And look, there was there was a lot of contact there, but was it excessive? He went after the ball, and Carl Anthony Towns put his left yeah. arm out. I agree with you. I don't know that yeah. I don't know that you can call that. That is not excessive. Yeah. That's a basketball play. I mean he he went after him hard. He's going after yeah, the ball there. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what you can do. Like, and, and look, Dan, you hear me say this all the time. There was a lot of contact. You hear me say this all the time. When you go off of one leg, when you're when you're going up against a shot blocker, you are in a vulnerable position. You always try to tell big guys, even guards, square up to the basket, go off two, where you can protect yourself and still complete the play. I agree with you 100. percent I, I think if Towns doesn't use the left arm. Holmes might actually get a piece of the ball. It was the left arm of Towns that prevented him from reaching the ball and led to more contact between the two. Well, in the NBA, if you put your arm out like that, it's an automatic offensive foul. Right. right. Now, the referees clearly didn't see that. I mean, they're, they're supposed to call that thing as well. But it was an unfortunate physical play, but it was just a physical play. Now, even if you're making a play on the ball, if the contact is deemed excessive, it can be called a flagrant foul but in this case the issue is was it Holmes who led to the contact being excessive well that, that's the thing yeah. and you know they've already called the flagrant foul they're not pulling that thing back the question is whether they're going to make it a flagrant one or a flagrant two well two means he's kicked out of the game exactly and I don't think I don't think that even come clear. first of all I don't know why it takes this long how many times do you have to look at this we've already seen it 15 times it's ridiculous if, if you can't make up your mind this fast it's a flagrant one let's move on now on that uh, on that angle you could see the left arm there of Holmes comes across kind of the chin and the upper chest of Towns. Yeah but my point is Dan this is not the Zapruder film right you know 100 percent no I understand Towns is yeah. fine yeah let's play yeah they called the flagrant if you have to look at it 50 times then it is not a flagrant two you can, you should be able to spot a flagrant two right away either way it's two shots in the ball. If it's a flagrant two, then Holmes is out of the game as well. I can't imagine. Well, if they're looking at it this yeah, long, I, I can't know. imagine it. Yeah. And this is getting ridiculous. And something's got to be done about this. This is not what this game is supposed to be about. Flagrant one. I mean, three minutes yeah. to determine something we said on the first replay. This isn't that hard. So two shots in the ball and a foul on Holmes and for Holmes that'll be his second. 
And Rick Barnes still looking for an explanation. And keep in mind, he obviously hasn't seen a replay. He just knows what he thinks he saw with live action. He'll get a chance to look at it later. Well, Carl Anthony Towns is some kind of ball player. Very skilled young man. He's going to be a great player down the road. He's really good now, but the longer he works at this game, he's going to get better and better. This is a hard question for me to ask you, but of, of, of the 10 guys who get regular minutes for Kentucky, does he have the most long-term upside in your opinion? Yeah, I think he would. It, it, Trey Lyles has quite a bit as well, but I think I think Carl Anthony Towns is the best player. He's got that too. And he's wide open off the inbounds play. And what a momentum shift there. Four quick points for Kentucky. And a quick shot for Texas that won't stay down. And Towns with a rebound. Euless. Tie game. Time out. Back in Lexington, along with Jay Bill, Shannon Spake, I'm Dan Schulman. All of a sudden, in Kentucky, which was struggling to score, they get six quick points, the two free throws, the jumper by Towns, and then another one by Euless. Texas just fallen asleep on the inbounds play where Carl Anthony Towns knocks down the jumper, and then after coming down, and Yancey takes a quick challenge jump shot. That allowed Kentucky to get out in transition, and Tyler Euless makes such good decisions. That was a great decision for that pull-up jumper. A quick 6-0 run lasting all of 21 seconds of game time. Now for Texas, it's about handling pressure. And a lot of ball handlers in there for the Longhorns right now with Felix, Annie Ansi, and Holland. But a pass goes astray. Felix the turnover. Kentucky looking for the lead. A lot of ball handlers for Texas, but not a lot of scorers. With Jonathan Holmes out, this is not a powerful scoring lineup. Both coaches perhaps doing what they can to protect those who are in foul trouble. There are a number of players on both sides with two. And Trey Lyles of the Wildcats has three. Sticking with the 2-3 zone. Holly Stein. Kentucky lead. Yancey. And I don't know how anybody can hear a whistle out there. There was a foul before the block, I believe. I think it's Booker. Crowd doesn't like it. Timeout on the floor. Kentucky on a major run since that flagrant foul. And the ball going inside to Willie Cauley Stein against the zone. Gets the jump hook to go down. It's been all cats of late. Alright guys, looking forward to that. And having fun here at Rupp Arena in Lexington with Jay Billis, Shannon Speak. I'm Dan Schulman. Number six, Texas. Number one, Kentucky. Two undefeated teams really having at each other here tonight. Very physical. A ton of great athletes with great size on the floor. A lot of fouls in this game because of the physical nature of the game. As Yancey, the sophomore from Richardson, Texas, knocks down both and ties the game right now is the game plan for Rick Barnes try to get through to halftime he's got some guys on the bench with two fouls and some key guys on the bench with two fouls just try to stay where it is right now and get to the half yeah if you can steal these last three minutes and go into the half tied or better that's either a jump ball or a walk it's a walk but look how poorly that Kentucky has played on the offensive end and you give a lot of credit to Texas's defense because Texas defense has been really really tough but Kentucky shooting 28% I mean 28% and they're tied and getting out rebounded by a more than two to one margin yeah. Texas has nine offensive rebounds Kentucky's got nine rebounds total and this has not been a great performance by the Wildcats but they're still tied eBay has to go through his fingertips. It remains with Texas after they get a couple of looks at it. I'll tell you, Texas has to feel, they're not going to feel 
any better until they get to halftime, get through this last 2.43 of the first half. Yeah. But to have as many fouls as they've had, they've coughed the ball up 12 times. I mean, they've turned over 12 times. I don't think Texas has played very well either. And again, from a Kentucky point of view, John Calipari's gone away from the platoons for about the last 10 or 11 minutes. Probably a combination of who's not playing well and the foul trouble that they have. There's another offensive rebound. And Dakari Johnson commits the foul. That'll be his third. So Lyles has three and Johnson has three. And maybe for the first time all season, Jay, the relentless depth that Kentucky has is being tested a little bit. It is being, well, the size is being yeah. tested. And the physical nature of Kentucky is being tested. Because what, really what's happening is Texas is hitting first and they're hitting hard. Now they've picked up some fouls as a result of it, but they've established that it's when the ball goes up, it's game on. And if Rick Barnes had anybody other than his worst free throw shooter at the line more often than anybody else in the game, eBay now two for eight. I mean, he's playing his tail off, but he is not a good free throw shooter. And it remains time. Kentucky's got to get some penetration into the gaps. They are just throwing the ball around the perimeter and trying to get some interior screening. You have got to penetrate these gaps. Harrison no look pass, Poitras. Over eBay to give the Wildcats the lead. Here comes Holland. And he's fouled. It's Andrew Harrison. There's really no reason for Kentucky to reach. And if you can steal it, fine, but those were just wild reaches to try to get a steal on a guy who's trying to take the ball back out. We've had a total of 25 fouls called in the game, 11 of them on Texas, 14 on Kentucky. Well, really, the biggest play of the game has been that flagrant foul on Jonathan Holmes. It put Holmes out of the game, and then it gave it basically gave Kentucky new life because they had been really stagnant in this first half. At the time of that play, it was a six-point lead for Texas. It's now tied, 24-24 nearing the final two minutes of the first half here at Rupp. Yeah, token pressure in the backcourt of 1-1-3 set back to the 2-3 zone. Euless, that might have been a pass for Collie Stein. And back come the Longhorns. Yancey getting a lot of minutes tonight. Can't finish the layup, but he gets it back. One of the few times that Texas has been able to play ahead of the Kentucky defense. Yancey again. And swatted away. That's exactly what you talked about. Trying to take it all the way to the rim by yourself is asking for trouble. An initial drive where it's two or three dribbles, you're just given too much time for these shot blockers to come over from the weak side and wipe that away. You can draw those shot blockers, then kick it out. I think the second pass is where you can hurt Kentucky, making that second pass out of penetration for an open shot. Now, it's easier said than done, obviously. But Here's Felix. And it rolls off the rim to Collie Stein. Good job by Poitras to make him finish that. Aaron Harrison left it short, and it will be Texas ball as Poitras goes tumbling into a row of photographers on the baseline. I don't know why Aaron Harrison wanted to pull the trigger on that. You know, if you get something in transition, then you can get to the rim so you can beat that zone down the floor. But that was a horrible shot. And now all of a sudden, after having the ball for two or three seconds, now Kentucky's going to have to play 30 seconds of defense. That shot by Harrison put no pressure on the Texas transition defense. And really, Kentucky's offense hasn't put a ton of pressure on Kentucky or on Texas' defense. Holland to a wide open Lambert. Well executed by the Longhorns to take the lead. Well, that's the penetration that will get you an open shot. Penetrate to pass, and you will find yourself a good open shot. The question is, can you make them? And so far, Connor Lambert has done that. And John Calipari will use a timeout. Sunday, the selection committee's final round. is a, a wonderful, wonderful game. Well, if you weren't with us earlier, here is the key play of the game. Jay talked about a little while ago. A flagrant foul called on Jonathan Holmes of Texas. So it's two shots. They knock those down. Then Towns knocks down a jumper. Then Euless 
Uh, hits a jumper, and it was six quick points for the Wildcats and Texas's best player being relegated to the bench. Well, it allowed Kentucky to get some easy baskets. Obviously, the easy free throws by Carl Anthony Towns, but then the jump shot that he hit, and then in transition. And other than that, when they've been in the half court, nothing easy has been Kentucky. Another jump hook for Collie Stein to tie it, yet Texas has weathered the storm. They've got the ball and can hold for the final shot here in the first half as the crowd gets to its feet here at Rupp. Well, Texas has made this a 20-minute game now. Oh, and a turnover. A pass through the hands of Yancey. Yancey fell down as he was coming out to the wing, and Felix just couldn't pull that ball back. Nobody's there to inbound the ball for Kentucky. Five seconds. Aaron Harrison. Lammer down with a rebound. And the first half will come to a close in a tie between these two highly ranked and undefeated teams. It was interesting. It was physical. And it was intense. 26-26 at halftime between Texas and Kentucky. Shannon Spake is with John Calipari. Coach, the one thing that really stands out in this first half is a lack of rebounding. How do you improve on that in the second? This game is a dog fight. They got the dogs we don't right now. So we're going to have to see if we have some dogs in that locker room that are going to go out and play without fouling. You got to stay in front. You got to reap. We're leaving corners. We left the corner three times for shots. We're breaking down. But you know what? This is exactly what this team needs. The Thanks. flagrant one sparked some offense for your team. Why the early offensive struggles? Because we are not real good offensively right now. Thanks, Coach. All right, he tells it like it is. He says it's the kind of game they need, and they're getting it. Tied at 26 at the half. Let's send it back to the studio for the Mazda halftime report and find out the thoughts of Adnan Burke, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. It's all tied up between Texas and Kentucky. This is all a part of Jimmy B Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Welcome back to Rupp. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, number six, number one, tied. What do you think? Well, Texas's game plan worked very well. Texas didn't just compete on the glass. They dominated the glass, out-rebounding Kentucky by 16 in that first half, and they forced Kentucky to shoot over the top. They kept them out of the lane and did not allow any second shots. Texas, the big problem was they turned the ball over, turned it over 13 times. I, I have to feel like both coaches felt like their teams didn't play as well as they should have, but for Texas, they withstood the foul trouble. Now they come into the second half. They can play all of their players. I think Rick Barnes has to feel at least pretty good that he's made this into a 20-minute game. Let's find out what Shannon Spake found out during halftime. Well, how's this for a quote, Dan? This is big boy basketball. That's what Coach Barnes told me as he walked out of that locker room. He told me pregame that there were three keys for this team. They must eliminate dunks. Rebounding would be huge and take care of the ball. Two out of three. They need to eliminate those turnovers. All right, Shannon, thank you. So there is some foul trouble in this game. A couple of players with three fouls for Kentucky, Lyles and Akari Johnson, but they're both on the floor to start the second half as the white platoon is out there. John Calipari, at least for now, back to the platoon system. Holmes, no, kept alive by Ridley. But it is Kentucky ball, and Johnson is fouled by Lambert. And that's an early third foul here just seconds into the second half on Connor Lambert. Well, Connor Lambert had a really good first half, knocking down a couple of open shots off of penetration. He had six rebounds, played the backside of that zone very effectively. Oh, forgive me. It, Lambert had his arm up in the air as if he were accepting the foul, but it's actually on Holmes. So it's Jonathan Holmes who picks up the third. And Jay goes to the bench 15 seconds into the second oh, half. Oh, that's a huge play right there for Kentucky to get Jonathan Holmes out of the game. They go smaller as Yancey is back in. Eulis steps in. I don't know if Lambert was trying to trick the officials into giving him the foul instead of Holmes, but it is on Holmes. And Akari Johnson gives Kentucky the lead. Well, Tyler Eulis passed up an open shot and as a result wound up getting his team a better shot. Felix no. Collie Stein the rebound.
There were seven ties and seven lead changes in the first half. Very physical, hard fought. Molly Stein left it short on the front of the rim, but he got fouled down low. Well, Yancey got him with the body. The ball is moving a little bit more effectively early in the second half. The nice interior pass by Dakari Johnson to the cutting Willie Cauley Stein. You know, whether the penetration is off the dribble or off the pass, you've got to penetrate this zone. And Miles Turner back into the game for Felix. So Rick Barnes already too deep into his bench here just a minute into the second half. And Barnes obviously was not a big fan of that length of the court drive by Javon Felix. Turner played only five minutes in the first half, picking up a couple of quick fouls. Yeah, those fouls took him out of the ball game. And a quick 4-0 run for the Wildcats to start the second half. Kentucky sticking man-to-man -man throughout this game. Yancey turns it over. Boy, the unbelievable reach and range of the seven-footer, Willie Cauley-Stein. And his ability to move his feet, the fact that a seven-footer could guard LaDante Henton of Providence, who is really an outstanding player. The lefty's a big-time scorer. He couldn't get a shot off. He's one of eight against Willie Cauley-Stein. So Cauley-Stein playing with the white platoon. No Marcus Lee in there right now as Trey Lyles knocks down the baseline jumper. And a timeout taken by Rick Barnes. 6-0 run, Kentucky. Out of the shoot here in the second half. Tonight's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. We're here at Rupp Arena, number one in undefeated Kentucky, taking on number six in undefeated Texas. And with all the history in the Kentucky program, hard to believe that this is just the fourth time ever, Jay, that Kentucky at 7-0 or better has played another program at 7-0 or better. The last time it happened, 2011, uh, at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, the Christian Watford shot to win the game as Indiana beat Kentucky. But it's a big-time matchup here. Two undefeated and highly ranked teams. And Kentucky's looked very good here to start the second half. Lambert misses an open jumper. And Lambert has been open. He's drawing big guys away from the bucket. Booker. Ball's on the deck. Lyles has it. Looked like Booker rushed that shot just a bit, and he's really been shooting well. Last five games, he was 14 of 25 from three. And he's the second leading scorer on this Kentucky team. Nobody on the team because of the lack of big minutes for anybody. Nobody's scoring even 11 points per game for Kentucky. Euless wide right, and Lambert down with a rebound. Texas went back to man-to-man. -to -man. They're going underneath every screen. They're going to force Kentucky to prove it over the top. And two Kentucky players swarming Holland because Yancey was back out of his own basket trying to put his shoe back on. So they tried to take advantage of that, but they end up committing a foul. And it's Booker. Texas led by as many as six. This is the biggest lead of the game for Kentucky. Texas really hasn't been able to run any offense and get what they want. Tough shot. Kind of a fadeaway three by the freshman Turner. But another offensive rebound. Yancey will put it up and miss the three. Spin move by Euless. Extra pass. And the slam for Lyle. How about the dish from Dakari Johnson? Look how pumped up he is now on defense. Kentucky off the difficult shot, getting a run out. And Tyler Euless passes the ball ahead. Usually when you pass it to a seven-footer for a finish. But a terrific touch pass by Dakari Johnson to Trey Lyles. Johnson playing with all kinds of energy right now. 10-0 Kentucky run in the second half. Again, with all this talent and pressure, sooner or later, it's going to get to you. 
Another steal by Collie Stein. And a foul before the shot on Holland. eBay Holmes returning. Holmes with three fouls. Well, the two fouls on Holmes, the flagrant in the first half, and the personal here at the beginning of the second half as you see the Holland foul. Maybe the two biggest plays of the game. Yeah, good shot fake there by Devin Booker. He's such a good standstill shooter. When he eyes that rim and gives a shot fake, the defense is going to go for it. Now to the out-of-bounds side, 2-3 zone. And Turner down with a rebound. The rebounds are grabbed above the rim in this game. Almost being guarded by Devin Booker. And that catch a lot further out than Texas would normally make it in that elbow set that they run. Now Kentucky's contesting every dribble and every pass. They have really stepped it up at both ends of the floor over the outset of the second half. It was tied at 26 at the break. And the Wildcats have roared out to a 10 to nothing start here in the second half, including the tic-tac-toe Eulis, Johnson, and Lyles for the crowd-pleasing slant and speak. Well, Dan, Tyler Eulis may be one of the smallest guys on this team, but he is certainly one of the most feisty. And speaking with this Kentucky team, they really give him a lot of credit to their success in the second half of these games. He comes in, he starts with that white, white platoon, he is relentless, and he does not let the other team get into any kind of flow. All right, Shannon, thank you. Shot clock running down, and it's a violation on the Longhorns. As good as Kentucky's defense is normally, Jay, they've taken it up a notch here in the second half. No question. Texas has not gotten an open look. They've not gotten a bucket. They're 0 for 6 now in the second half. And I'll tell you, I think Shannon's exactly right about Tyler Eulis, but Willie Cauley-Stein has been spectacular in this game. This game has been... Nothing but a fist fight, but he has rebounded. He's got four steals. He's defended multiple positions, and he's been good offensively. And he's staying on the floor. The other four players switched, but a lead didn't come into the game. Collie Stein remains in the game for the work that he's done at both ends tonight. A foul on Poitras, his second. John Calipari said it before the game, said it all week long, said it to Shannon walking off the court at the end of the first half. This is exactly the kind of game he feels his team needs. They've got an interesting month. They're still going to play North Carolina, UCLA, and Louisville before the new year. Well, they're going to get what they need in the non-conference. The question is, are they going to get what they need in conference right. play? And a foul away from the ball on eBay, his third. And Rick Barnes well out on the court now walking back toward the bench. It has been a very frustrating five minutes or so for Coach Barnes. Well, it's hard to get any continuity in your offense when, one, you're being defended by Kentucky, and then the second part of it is the number of whistles. 2-3 zone. Towns is in the middle, and he's a good passer when he catches it. And Holmes is up on the top right now. That's how big Texas is. They've also got Lambert, Turner, and eBay in the game. There's big, maybe bigger than Kentucky is right now, with the exception of the point guard spot. It's so difficult to go against this Kentucky defense. They're so long. Great dish. Penetration and dish, and eBay slams it home with the assist to Holland. I still think that's one of the only spots that this defense is vulnerable, and that's attacking it off the dribble and then dishing it off. It's going to be hard to get those drop-offs near the basket, but you may be able to kick it out and get an open shot. Andrew Harrison slips inside and lays it in. Like with his size and finishing ability, he should drive it even more. And I know John Calipari wants him to start pushing it more in transition so that Andrew Harrison can play ahead of the defense, get the ball up the court, and get more layups. This, Calipari thinks his team needs to get more transition layups. His teams are going to make them play five on five. That's what they want to do is make it a half-court game. Deep position there for eBay. But just too many Kentucky players between him and the basket. Two on one. Holly 
Billy Stein from Aaron Harrison, and the lead grows to a dozen. Holmes. And another foul on eBay, his fourth. Willie Cauley Stein has been the player of this game. He's defended all over the floor. He has run the floor. He's gotten steals. And he's played as well as any Kentucky player on the offensive end. And it's awfully nice when Aaron Harrison can come down. You throw it up anywhere. And Cauley Stein and several of his teammates can go get it and finish it. Boy, and that's a well-earned rest for Willie Cauley Stein. Texas in the zone. Absolutely nothing DeMarcus Holland could do trying to defend that two-on-one. That basket on Texas's offensive end, that rim has been absolutely covered up. If it weren't for that drop-off to Prince Ebay, there has been nothing for Texas. The only two points the Longhorns have here in the second half. There's too much passing it around. you got to get into the teeth of this defense. Good cut. Poitras couldn't finish, but Towns can. The penetration forces the defense to move, and you're going to be able to get some offensive boards. And now it's Ridley picking up the foul, his third. A number of these turnovers have been offensive fouls. And this game has gotten away from Texas in a hurry. One bucket in the second half for Texas in eight minutes, and that has been it. Towns too strong off the glass. Texas trying to run. A good job by Kentucky in getting back. Texas's big guys are having a hard time getting positioned down low with all that size around the basket. Holmes and Poitras. And a block called on Poitras. His third, John Calipari mocking the call as we go to immediate timeout. It has been all, and I mean all, Wildcats here in the second half, outscoring Texas. 16 to 2 to lead by 14. The troops, all a part of the journey to the tourney, presented by Sonic. Well, what do you make of this one, Jay? Well, Arizona, the better defensive teams. Arizona, one of the best defensive teams in the country. And Gonzaga, the better offensive team. And you're not going to find a better senior point guard than. Your Canadian partner there, Thank you. Kevin Pangos. <laughs> Pangos has been terrific all season long. He can really shoot it, and he's healthy now. He had that yeah. foot problem last year that made his year really difficult. Boy, it's been just an excessive number of fouls. A ton of fouls on all the big guys. Not to say they weren't warranted, but a ton of fouls on the big guys in this game. That's the fourth on Lyle, so he'll leave it. Poitras will come back in. The guards have managed to stay out of it. But we've had big guy after big guy going back to his respective bench room in the game telling their coach, what am I supposed to do? Ridley falling out of bounds, and now Euless takes it out of bounds with him, and it is Kentucky ball. Must have hit Holland, as you'll get a good look right here. Well, they said Holland was stepping out of bounds, but actually it was Euless touching the ball out of bounds. That was a bad call. Yeah, it should be Texas ball. And the referee was right there and totally missed it. Booker wide open. Wow. Holly Stein yeah. again. He has been spectacular. And they gave it, they give it to Towns. I thought the Collie Stein was up there. You know you're having a good night when you can't decide which of your two big guys got the putback. And another foul. This one on Poitras, his fourth. Poitras had his arm around the postman. You know, and in this game, that, that's the equivalent of jaywalking. <laughs> well, one thing that Kentucky's done extraordinarily well this year is score in the paint. They have outscored the opposition 39 to 16 on average in the paint in each game. And although they didn't get much going in the paint in the first half, they are certainly getting the job done in the second half. As we have yet another foul. That one on Tyler Eulis, yep. his first. 
Kentucky had to just start switching some of those things and we wouldn't have to fight through so many of the screens. There'll be a lot of free throws here in the second half. Ridley, double teamed. Nice look from Holmes. Holland is open, and he's really worked on that shot. His free throw shooting and his outside shooting, Jay, much improved from a year ago. And it's that second pass, Dan, out of the double team. Two were playing one on Ridley. He passed it out to Holmes, and Holmes made that second pass. That's where you're going to find an opening. The league's pushing it, and now puts the brakes on. And again, a foul on the inside, and this time it's Towns. That'll be his third. And that will put Texas in the bonus. So both teams in the bonus with 10.35 to go. So Poitras and Lyles have four for Kentucky. Ebay has four for Texas, and there are a number of others with three. Well, Turner has done a really good job early on in this season. He's had some big games against some of the lesser opponents that Texas has played. Hadn't really had that caliber game. Well, Towns is in early on that one, but Turner made it anyway. But Turner's, he is going to be a big time player. And he's got the humility to know that he doesn't he doesn't know it all yet. He's not thinking about the NBA. He's thinking about being the best college player he can be. Texas has whittled a 16-point deficit down to 11. In and out for Euless. Rebound Turner. Well, Euless missed that, but it was a really good drive. That penetration is available. Ridley, shovel pass to Turner. Rejected, and that might have been Pauly Stein. Holly Stein has blocked five uh, excuse me, three shots now. He's got four steals. He's been outstanding. Boy, a terrific feed from Holland. And good patience underneath by the freshman Miles Turner. And John Calipari wants a timeout. A quick 7-0 run by the Longhorns. Well, Texas is playing hard and hanging in there. And their defense picked it up a little bit more in the last few minutes. But just beating, refusing that screen, it was down, beating it into the middle and drawing the defense and being able to dish it off. That was awfully easy for Texas. Maybe the easiest possession they've had, but it was all because they got a, an extra possession after that block shot. So the freshman of Miles Turner getting a taste of the biggest game that he's played in at the collegiate level thus far. The number two ranked freshman on the ESPN 100. Played some basketball for Team USA. Won a gold medalist, the, a member of the U18 team and his favorite player growing up, a Longhorn, Kevin Durant. Shannon Spade has more. Yeah, it doesn't hurt when your favorite player is Kevin Durant when you're growing up. In fact, Miles Turner got to meet him when he was younger. Met him several times now, of course, but when he was younger, he had a pair of his sneakers signed by Mr. Durant. You can see his signature right there on the side of those Starberries. Uh, you know, Miles told me today it wasn't always Texas. He actually thought about going out of state, but when he went on his recruiting visit, it just felt like the right fit. I asked him what other players he likes in the NBA, Jay, and he mentioned guys like Tristan Thompson, LaMarcus Aldridge, Dexter Pittman. Like, it's okay to like guys who didn't go to Texas, too. <laughs> but Miles Turner is obviously, he's a company guy. Well, a lot of guys, I hate to break this to you, but a lot of guys like Kevin Durant, they don't turn out to be quite as good as Miles Turner. He has some talent, too. It's not just who he likes. He just picked up his third foul. And a guy like so many big men today, inside, outside skills. Well, both he and Carl Towns have that, and then some. I think that Turner is more of a back to the basket guy than Towns. Both of them can play with their backs to the basket, but I think Towns is a little more advanced in his ability to face up and knock down a perimeter shot right now. One and two for Johnson, rebound Lyles. Kentucky's doing a lot of interior screening with their big guys, trying to, there it is, the screen by Poitras, and that's a good pass out. Andrew Harrison, air ball on the jumper, Poitras gets it back, and finishes. And how strong was that? Turner for three. 
And Lyles with another rebound. Andrew Harrison into traffic, kicks it to his brother. Johnson stretch, still loose and still Kentucky's. Floater, no good. And now Kentucky really starting to assert itself on the offensive glass. Again, how about that push initially by Andrew Harrison? That opened up everything, especially the shot for his brother Aaron and the offensive glass. Just that really strong push in transition of him putting pressure on the rim. Good pass. And Poitras fouled from behind by Turner. The fourth on Miles Turner. Now, Texas is awfully difficult to play against. This is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Their size is really impressive and at times intimidating. And I know Kentucky can't feel great about the way they played on the offensive end. But to have shot the ball as poorly as Kentucky has shot it. And to be up 12 in this kind of game says a lot about the quality of Kentucky's defense. This is one hard team to score on. One of the big stories in the first half was the dominance on the offensive glass by Texas. And the story has been reversed to a certain extent here in the second half. Both big, deep, athletic, physical, great rebounding teams. Kentucky really getting a lot more action on the glass here in the second half. And don't you feel that there has been a, a cumulative effect of the 10 guys that Kentucky can yes. throw at you? I mean, you know, this is a this is a well-conditioned Texas team. And these guys are going to be exhausted after this one. Texas has played nine tonight. Some limited because of foul trouble. Felix buries the three. 49-38. That's the pass. The penetration, the kick out, and the second pass. And we've talked about that before. It hasn't, you haven't seen it all that often because it's difficult to get that initial penetration. Now a steal by Holland. And he's got a chance for three. Well, how about that play? Felix knocking down the three and then getting the turnover and taking it all the way and strongly going to the basket. Demarcus Holland puts Texas right back in this thing. Thank you very much. John Shambi, Dick Vital standing by in Lawrence for Florida and Kansas. The back end of the doubleheader tonight here on ESPN, the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Sonic and Kentucky with a nine-point lead on Texas, but Texas has scored five quick points. Demarcus Holland is now with the free throw line looking to complete a three-point play. Holland is just a warrior. And that steal and buck that he made, that was a big-time play for Texas. He's into double figures with 10. Holly Stein back into the game for Kentucky. Poitras will go to the bench. Now, this is a big possession for both teams, but for Texas, if they can get another stop here and a score, that would put some real game pressure on Kentucky. They haven't felt it since the first half. Andrew Harrison probing on the baseline. Johnson. Close out there by Holland. Shot clock down to single digits. Booker baseline. Her eyes is up for a tough 15 footer. Johnson misses on the follow. And we have a held ball and a wrestling match between a couple of big fellas in Johnson and Ridley. And the possession arrow will keep it with Kentucky. Well, Takari Johnson got away with a bit of a push on this to get that offensive rebound. And both players, they just wouldn't let go of the ball. I mean, that's the way you want to see guys go after. Went after it with both hands and two strong guys just battling for the ball. That's a, do you get two points for a takedown like that or just one? <laughs> I mean, Cameron Ridley is a, he's a big man to go flying like he just did. But again, there is NBA size on both teams. And that's one of the reasons why there are 30, 30 NBA scouts here at this game tonight. And another steal by Holland. At the length and the active hands of Texas knocking that away. Boy, Dakari Johnson was wide open and Lyles missed him early. You got to get that ball inside right away. You cannot hesitate. The basket here would be huge for the Longhorns. Ridley surrounded. Felix is open. Ridley will try it himself. And then over the back, there's an easy call. 
Who is that? That's Holmes picking up his fourth. Boy, Felix was wide open beyond the three-point line, and Ridley just had so many guys around him, Jay couldn't see him. He's so busy jostling for position and going one-on-one -on -one against another gigantic body. And you can understand how a guy could miss something, but when you don't have an initial move right away, you got to kick that thing out. So free throws coming for Lyles. The freshman from Indianapolis, the Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana last year. He's a good free throw shooter. He struggled from the three point line early in the season, but he can knock down free throws. Misses the front end. Kentucky is giving Texas a chance to get right back into it. And Texas seems to have the pace that it wants. And the crowd kind of taken out of this momentarily. Ridley, bounce pass back to Lambert, kick to a wide open Holmes, and an air ball with the offensive rebound for Holland. They got, now the shot clock reset. I don't know why the shot clock reset. Felix will put it up, and down with a rebound, Kentucky. Whenever Texas drives and kicks it, they put Kentucky into rotation rebounding. All of a sudden, you're blocking out somebody that is not your initial guarding assignment and Kentucky's not done a good job in rotation rebound Johnson from the free throw line he's had a very solid night as well, well that was a big turnaround five and a half to go the leads at ten Texas Another foul just, away from the ball. Texas just ran a little set where they could get Jonathan Holmes curling off the post. And he was just grabbed as he was trying to make that curl cut to get open inside. Second on Polly Stein. Towns and Eulis return for the Wildcats as John Calipari has gone completely away from the platoon system here as, as he did for much of the first half as well. And look, there's 5.21 to go in this thing. And Texas's players, they're, they're in really good shape, but they're tired right now. And not to say that Kentucky's not got a little bit of fatigue, but they've got they've got an awful lot of bodies, and they're not as tired as Texas is. And you wonder how that's going to affect these two teams down the stretch. Two big free throws for Holmes, who has had his struggles from the field tonight. Eight-point game. And Miles Turner in the middle of that zone, so you got a freshman that you can. Try to attack. He's not quite as bulky inside. Eulis shovels it off to the corner to Lyles. And Lyles will be shooting free throws. Demarcus Holland called for the foul. A really nice shot fake by Trey Lyles, the freshman from Indianapolis. He struggled from the perimeter thus far this season. Coming into the game, he was 3 of 16 from 3. But he plays with such a nice pace. He's got a a perimeter game. He can go down into the post. He's a good rebounder. Very skilled player. And re free throw shooting was a real sore spot for Kentucky last season. They've got some better free throw shooters this season, but they still have to step in there and make them. Especially in a game like this where it's so tough to get a bucket. Turner, them both. Turner was in early. Less than five minutes to go. Turner had his hand in the in the lane, falling into the lane as Lyles was shooting that shot. Holmes has to get the ball early. Count it! Jonathan Holmes is the top three-point shooter for this Texas team. He has played more on the perimeter, but now taking the freshman Trey Lyles into the post. He got one-on-one -on -one in the post. Nobody came over, at least not early enough. Willie Cauley-Stein just reaching in, and Towns came way late to try to block it. Third on Willie Cauley-Stein. That was a huge play by Jonathan Holmes. 
And all of a sudden, they can get it down to five. And they do. Ridley coming back into the game for Texas. Johnson back into the game for Kentucky. This one is far from over. Well, how about Texas hanging in there? They, they could have packed up their tent and gone back to Austin. What were they down? 14 early in the second half. And it looked grim. Yep. They scored only two points in the first eight minutes of this half. Now all of a sudden, Kentucky's standing around again. That's just not a good shot. It's a good rebound, though. <laughs> Polly Stein having himself a night. 16 for Willie Polly Stein. It's the first half of our doubleheader tonight for you here on ESPN. Florida and Kansas still to come. Tipping 15 minutes from now as Dakari Johnson picks up his fourth foul. Texas is doing a great job of posting up hard and looking into the post. They're screening for each other and they're giving Texas an opportunity to, or giving uh, Kentucky an opportunity to foul. And they're giving the referees an opportunity to blow the whistle and they have been taking them up on it. And Rick Barnes will use a timeout. 4.01 to go. The crowd is booing the officials here in Lexington. Seven point lead for the Wildcats. And the biggest reason why, if you had to pick out one player, it would be that guy, Willie Cauley Stein. Willie Cauley Stein is a great defender. He can guard multiple spots, but he has done a really good job. He's been very patient in the post. He's run the floor, scoring in transition early on in the second half, catching it in the middle of that zone defense. And not going too fast, not panicking. And then this offensive rebound just goes right over the top. He's had steals, he's had block shots, he's got double figure rebounds, double figure points. For Kentucky, Willie Cauley Stein's been the player of the game. It hasn't been close. For Texas coming back from 14 down, they've, they've gotten back into it, have gotten as close at, as five on a couple of occasions here in the half. If they're going to win this game, what do they have to do well in the last four minutes? I think they've got to continue to pack it in and make Kentucky prove it over the top. They've got to make them, floor, make them shoot jump shots. If they let them continue to get to the basket or continue to get offensive rebounds, it's advantage Kentucky. And I think they've got to continue to go inside. You know, Jonathan Holmes in the post has been better than out on the perimeter. And if they can continue to set those interior screens to get opportunities to get the ball inside where they can get fouled, they're going to be more efficient getting fouled than they will be shooting jump shots or trying to get something off their offense. Remember, another game coming tonight. The SEC Big 12 Challenge continues from Lawrence, Kansas. Florida and KU coming up. Florida still trying to find themselves, trying to get healthy. They're just 3-3 three and three on the season right now. And for Kansas at 5-1, and one, coming off a win last week over Michigan State, their only loss this year to Kentucky. That was in the Champions Classic in Indianapolis a couple of weeks ago. Both those teams still trying to find themselves and find their identity. But Kansas has playing, been playing some different lineups game to game. Ridley bricks the first. One of the problems for Texas tonight so many of the big guy fouls committed by Kentucky have put the big guys from Texas on the line and we know that eBay struggles Ridley's a better shooter than that well, it's been it's been the non free throw shooting big guys yeah. one of two so he made the correction and it's a six point game four minutes to go the defensive rebound is gigantic here for Texas Some nice pass to the corner. Defensive rebound. When Jonathan Holmes got away with a gigantic push in order to get that defensive rebound. He pushed Dakari Johnson five or six feet. Well, bodies flying all over the place. This time it's Collie Stein and Holmes. And Holmes might have just gotten. It looks like there's some. Moist perspiration, yeah. yeah. And Holmes came up limping a little bit as he was trying to fight his way through a couple of Wildcats. So we'll take the under four media timeout with Texas hanging in there. 53 47, Kentucky, 323 to go. All right, fellas, thank you. So what a tough week for UConn, as Seth said, the exact same spot. They're beaten by a three in the dying seconds in the exact same spot. 
And now here, Kentucky is leading by six. Take a look at some of the contact down low. Watch Jonathan Holmes here push off Willie Colley Stein to get that rebound. This is the kind of game this has been. I mean, it has been a physical fist fight. And you have got to be prepared for a play. And great steal by Colley Stein to respond. After he got pushed, he just kept playing. That was a great play by Willie Colley Stein. Jay, that's his fifth steal. A seven footer with five steals. He had steals, blocked shots. A double-double. Yeah. I mean, he's been everywhere. 16 points, 11 rebounds, 5 steals, 3 blocks for Willie Cauley-Stein. And a partridge in a pear tree. He's got everything. Yeah. And he's played more than anybody has played in a game for Kentucky all season. As Andrew Harrison nails a three-pointer. The first three of the night for Kentucky. Huge. Look at the pressure that Eulis can put on the ball. Felix drives around him and lays it in. And it's down to seven. Texas did a great job of handling pressure, but look all they had to do to get a score. A couple of 7-0 and teams. Aaron Harrison, known as the better shooter, of the Harrisons, but just if you go under on that ball screen, Harrison pulls up for it, and Texas has been going under on everything because they, they would rather give up an open shot than the penetration that would open up the offensive glass, open up a lob, give Kentucky a dunk. Shot clock at two. And down with a one-handed rebound is Holmes, and the foul is called on Poitras. And that's going to foul Alex Poitras out of the game. Holmes has just been so strong all game long. He's had to sit for some foul trouble. But that is quite a wrestling match those two got had going on. It's just who got caught pushing last, basically, because everybody's pushing. More college basketball action coming your way Tuesday night from Madison Square Garden in New York City. It's the Jimmy B Classic with Villanova and Illinois in the first game at 7 o'clock Eastern time, and then Indiana and Louisville in the nightcap at 9 o'clock Eastern. The Jimmy B Classic Tuesday night on the home court of College Hoops. Two free throws coming for Holmes. Poitras fouled out. A number of players with four. Three of them on the court right now playing with four fouls. And it's back down to five. One thing Texas doesn't want to do here is foul. Timeout John Calipari. Well, Rick Barnes playing on the road without one of his best players, the injured Isaiah Taylor, but he's not looking for a moral victory. He's looking for an actual victory over the number one team of the country. I think for the most part, Texas has done things the way they wanted to. They got on the glass. They made Kentucky shoot jump shots. They didn't let them get to the rim for a lot of dunks, but they're still down by five. This has gone exactly the way, from a game plan perspective, exactly the way that Texas wanted them. They wanted for Kentucky to have to shoot jump shots, challenge jump shots that you're not letting them get to the rim. You're taking them out of transition. You're not letting them get second chances. And we talked before the game, you know, game plans sound great. They're hard to execute. Right. But Texas has executed it very well. Now their offense hasn't been what they would have, have liked, but that's in large measure because Kentucky is the best defensive team in the country. But right now you would think that with a five point deficit and points being so difficult to get, that Rick Barnes is going to have to have to play man to man at some point. I'm not sure he's reached that point that I think he can still play zone now. But you get one stop. Now they're coming out the trap. Florida and Kansas still to come tonight. They're tipping off about four minutes from now in Lawrence. And that initial trap, a good idea. Take a little bit of time off. You don't have to guard this as long. Always time the man of the night for the Wildcats. And draws the foul. If it's Turner, he's done for the night, and it is. 
The freshman will foul out, and Polly Stein will shoot a pair of free throws. Well, in replacing Turner, Rick Barnes can take a little bit of time. He's effectively going to use this as a timeout. And that gives Willie Cauley Stein a little bit of extra time to think about these free throws. And Cameron Ridley will come back into the game. You have to expect, at least Kentucky has to expect, that Texas is going to try to get the ball inside, get to the rim. But you can't leave a guy like Jonathan Holmes. You've got to watch Holmes and Felix because you don't want to give up an open three to Felix or a guy like Connor Lambert just because there's penetration. Holly Stein now seven for nine from the line tonight. Well, that's one of the reasons, Dan, that you like having a junior come back. You have an older player. Really, Holly Stein's a much better player now than he was a year ago. Two possession game. Felix. Kentucky ball. And Texas has to put on full court pressure. And the one guy on the floor that you would like to foul is Dakari Johnson. He's probably not going to touch it until it's a finished situation anyway. Into the final minute, the seconds continue to tick away. Kentucky's got it. They get in trouble. They got a timeout. And at this point, Texas is better off just playing D than fouling now. They lob to the rim. And who else should slam it home but the best guy on the court tonight, Willie Colley Stein? Texas had to come out and chase that allowed a driving line when Andrew Harrison drives in that means that Texas has to help uphill and as they have done in most games this season they just lob it up and that's elbows at the rim to dunk it for Willie Colley Stein and Kentucky's going to win this ball game but they're going to win it their defense has won this game. In the second half, their defense was absolutely, it was st stifling throughout, but yeah. is absolutely stifling in the second half. A game, don't you think, that could be of enormous value to both of these teams heading forward this season? No question. And to have this kind of physical challenge, because not many teams in the country, in this country, are going to provide the physical beating that Texas can provide. I mean, Kentucky looked in the mirror, big guy to big guy, and they answered the call. Holland for three. And another foul by Ridley. There's your player of the game right there, Willie Holly Stein. Ridley's fouled out. And Holly Stein making another trek to the free throw line. And all these bodies, all these big talented Kentucky bodies take take its toll I think Texas has to feel like it was in a 15 round prize fight in this thing they're going to need a few days off yep. just to recover they have just tipped off at Kansas we'll get you there within seconds of this one ending here in Lexington Holly Stein now 20 points 12 rebounds five steals and three blocks Boy, the defensive show that he has put on in the last few games, but especially against Providence and Texas, with the varied players he's guarded, the numbers he's put up, I think you got to put him right up there for National Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, it's awfully early, but who's been a better defender than he's been? And a huge ovation as he leaves the game. 
Holmes from the corner. And we have a late foul on Holmes, and that's going to foul him out of the game with just 1.6 seconds to go. Well, a win here for the SEC in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, and they needed one as the Big 12 came in tonight with a 4-1 to lead. This will make it 4-2 to two with two more games coming tonight and two more tomorrow. Yeah, the Big 12 is the most balanced league in the country. Mm -hmm. Top to bottom, you have good teams. Really unbelievable coaches, but really, really good basketball teams. Texas will fall to 7-1. They'll go home for a while. Their next few games at home. Kentucky's got some big games coming up in the month of December. But they can hang their hat on this one. They are still undefeated with a 63 to 51 win over the Longhorns here at Rupp Arena tonight. Florida, Kansas is coming up for Jay Billis, Shannon Spake, and our entire crew. I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. Let's send it to John Chomby and Dick Vitale at Allen Fieldhouse.